Hello and welcome to Tidy X episode 71. Tidy X is a screencast where we go through and explain how our code works. My name is Ellis Hughes. You can find me on Twitter at Ellis underscore Hughes. And my name is Patrick Ward. You can find me on Twitter at, at OSP Patrick. And of course, Tidy X is on Twitter, Tidy underscore explained. You can hit us up on Gmail, tidy.explained at gmail.com. You can always like and subscribe on the YouTube channel. We'd appreciate that. And you can, if you'd like, take out an issue on the GitHub page. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, no, we love hearing from you. In fact, uh, a question that we received this last week inspired some of the, the content that we're going to be talking about today. But uh, yeah, no, we're looks, looking forward to doing this. We're continuing our series on uh, databases and are interacting with databases and kind of talking about some techniques that we can use to just like start exploring our database. They were, were thrown uh, a new database or a database administrator is like, hey, we've got, a new data, uh, got some new tables for you to look at going you forth in two. Where do you start? There you go. Yeah. So uh, let's get into it. I'm going to share my screen so Patrick can see what we're talking about here. Share and let's get going here. All right. So episode 71, we're not doing joins. Um, so we load our libraries per usual. So tidyverse, um, we do get data. This time we are no longer working with some combine data. We actually decided to scrape uh, 20 seasons of basketball games. So we're gonna be using <laughs> this going forward. So we're not gonna go into the details, but uh, library tidyverse, rvest and janitor for our data manipulation needs and web scraping needs, dbplyr for dealing with the database interactions and then RSQLite and DBI for reading and writing and doing some more generic database stuff where you can't use dbplyr to get that sh done. All right, so yeah, so we just go through, load, uh, pull data from every, every year and pull that in and do a bunch of fun manipulations here. We've covered this sort of information fairly in depth in past episodes. So I'm not gonna spend any time going through this so if you want to, uh, you can take a look at it and ask us some questions later on, but I'm just gonna scroll right past this. So sorry about that, everybody. It, it, it is just for those that wanna look through it, it is set up in a manner where everything through uh, line 63 there is Ellis building each function on its own. And then the ensuing line, whatever that is, 65, is everything wrapped into one single thing. So, um, and then right those are that. those are basically like three individual functions that he was sorting through how to set up and then he wraps it into one thing there at the end yep and this is where i connect to the database and loop across the various seasons so 2001 to 2021 yep and uh so we did this last there. week there the create the connection mm -hmm. um, where you're actually just building this is building the database uh, on your on your local box or wherever you're you're going to store it mm -hmm. And then you're going to run that function to pull the season data from 2001 to 2021. And then that dbcon says, hey, pull this data and drop it into my database. Yep. So I've got yep. a bunch of fun stuff under the hood. And then I always I always disconnect. I like a, a, lot of, a lot of connections and disconnections just to make sure that I don't have a stale connection floating around anywhere. Uh, but you do you, boo. With that, all right, so now we're gonna get into this interaction. So let's pretend we didn't know what we were actually pulling here. And our DBA said, all right, got you a new database, have some fun, explore it. Um, so let's get this thing going. So first I connect to the database. Here it's because we're using our SQLite, it's a local uh, database, so I'm able to interact with it directly. Sometimes it's on AWS, sometimes it's you know on your company's servers, wherever. But I don't know it's actually there. Let's pretend that we didn't create this. So what do I do first? Well, the first thing you might want to do is get an understanding of what tables even exist. And usually they're going to be given some reasonable name. Um, usually. <laughs> usually. Uh, <laughs> and so what you can use, at the very least, get a list or a, a vector of the file or the tables that exist. You can use the function DB list tables. And this function lists all the tables that exist in our database. In this case, it is um seasons so the, the the name structure is season underscore and then the actual year that it is so 2001 through 2020. um so we got we got that all there so that is our tables 
<laughs> so now we can go through and query individual ones to see if they're any different or like if there's differences across them. Hopefully, because they're named consistently, consistently, that means that they also have a similar structure to them. Um, so why don't we take a look at that? So what, what might you do if you wanted to get a header or a, um, get the column names from a table? Uh, the hacky way that I learned how to do this when I was first doing SQL is uh, probably also very inefficient. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, servers that I was working on, but I use this select star, uh, which says I want to select all columns yep. from, and then the, da the table that I want to be pulling from, in this case, I'm going to just pull season 2001 table. And then this where statement, where one equals zero. So typically you use where to identify which rows you want to be pulling from. So it's very similar to like the uh, filter function you might be used to in um, dplyr. Uh, but in this case, I actually don't want to pull any information from it other than the column names. And so when I say where one equals zero, that inherently means that there's no true entries there. So it won't actually pull any rows for me. It'll just pull an empty data frame with the column names for me. And then I would just wrap it in call, call names. And so there we go. So that, that's how I, uh, that's the hacky way that I used to be able to get the column names of a, of a table <laughs> and understand what was going good, on there. Good move. Yeah. Um, of course, dbplyr has a much nicer way of doing it. Uh, TBL stands for table, so I'm going to connect to the seasons 2000, 2001 table, and then I'm going to call column names on it. There we go. So I don't actually know if this is running SQL under the hood that then sends a query to get me the column names. I actually didn't check that. Um, let's actually quickly. And then you could use the uh, show, show query. Show query. Is it query or capital? Oh, there it is. Yeah. Uh, oh, it, it's starting to try to run everything. Stop. <laughs> yeah. No, it uh, it just ran it all. So, or um, it just pulled it directly. I, I wonder if. Yeah. Okay. I was gonna say I wonder if you ran just the TBL and show query if it's actually that piece that's pulling the uh, SQL that's running a SQL query. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, so that's actually the query under the hood that it's running, and so therefore, of yeah, course, yeah. when you call call names on it, it's already evaluated it and all fun stuff. So that is a way that you can use to get some column information without actually querying much about it. But that's not really useful. Usually when we're doing things, when we're first looking at, um, at a table, we're probably going to want to look at a head, right? Get the first couple rows. So Patrick, do you want to take us through this? Yeah, uh, so this is uh, how I would do this in SQL. This is usually, I think, I can't remember. The SQL languages are, have slight nuances. I think this is this is more like Postgres SQL, if I remember correctly. Uh, my SQL, I think, uses the word top, and you wrap it around the star. But this one here is like calling head on a data frame in, in R or Python or anything like that. Basically, we're going to do our run our query, connect to our database, Select star says we want all of the available columns within the table. We're going to select from table uh, season 20 or season 2001. And then this limit word here is basically saying limit six, limit 10, limit however many you want within the head of the, the data set uh, that, you're, that you're looking at. So we're going to do six. So that's going to return the top six rows of that, um, that data set. So that kind of gives you a sense of kind of seeing what's there in terms of the data and um, what might be available within that table. And then you can do this obviously in a tidyverse way. So you call that table function, just like we did to get the, um, the column names, that table function is running a SQL query against that table. And then uh, we're using head, which we do kind of all the time. And you can see that if he runs that uh, show query function, it gets returned back the exact SQL query that uh, I had written to see the head. So same thing, uh, just different ways of doing it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, it makes me it makes me happy to know that uh, I was not doing something completely completely backwards. <laughs> 
right, I, right, I, right. I guess this is rather simple, but it always my my sequel is so homegrown that uh, yeah, artisanal yeah. that <laughs> yeah, no, it's good. Always perfect. Good. All right, so now we're gonna go back into showing y'all. Um, you're reminding y'all what we what we can do a little bit more complicated stuff and a little more complicated query. So Patrick, do you want to take it? Do you want me to go through the uh, the tidyverse one and then you go through the DB get query? Yeah, that's fine. I think uh, last week we talked a little bit about this. How um, if you are not versed in SQL at all, uh, it can be overwhelming. And so if you just want to get to work, you can connect to the database and run your normal tidyverse functions. Uh, but at times that might be a little slow or, or not optimal depending on how much data you're doing. Obviously it's not going to be a problem for this data set. Um, and in which case you use that show query function there and, and that'll return the SQL query that you can take to your database administrator and ask for help. So we'll show uh, two different ways of getting the same information. In this case, we want to know the average score that the Cleveland Cavaliers put up against every visiting team to Cleveland in the 2001 season. Uh, Ellis will walk you through how you can call the table in tidyverse and then run the tidyverse code that essentially produces that. And then I'll do the exact same thing in SQL. Yep, yep, all right. So the first thing we gotta do is we gotta tell, tell uh, tidyverse which table we wanna be connecting to you. So we use that TBL function. Uh, we pass the database connection and the table name there. And then we just hop right back into our normal normal tidyverse syntax there. So we're gonna filter to keep any cases where the home is Cleveland Cavaliers, because then we know that the home team is the Cleveland Cavaliers. We're then gonna we're then going to group by visitor. So this is going to allow us to filter because sometimes a team could come multiple times during a season. Uh, so we're gonna call group by visitor, and then we're gonna summarize that information. And we're going to say we want this new or the, this column home points and we're going to say that is going to the mean value of home points because we want to know the average point scored by another team against them and then we're going to arrange it in a descending manner from home points that way we have the team that scored the most against the cleveland cavaliers in 2001 uh, at the very top and it goes down and so we run that and that's pretty straightforward and we're gonna uh, view it. And so it's it's complaining that there's some missing values and so th those are always removed in SQL. So um, we can set the explicit NARM equals true, which is, you know, normally you'd be doing that. Um, so we can silence the, the warning message by doing that. Uh, but yeah, so the Denver Nuggets, looks like the, they scored the most points against the Cleveland Cavaliers in 2001. And then followed by the Grizzlies, Bucks, Kings going down and there we go there we go it's pretty quick uh, pretty quick query felt very familiar to me to, to be able to write this um, but Patrick take us through the sequel one because for I don't know we I know we talked about this last week but it always still makes me confused with the group yeah in, in the... so yeah sequel <sighs> is um, uh, it always seems backwards when you write it um, so I connect to the database uh, and so db get query connect to db con and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to first say which columns i want which is really weird because normally you'd want to say hey i'm from this table i want these columns but first i'm saying select the column visitor and then i'm going to do an aggregation here so in sql um, instead of like in r where you're asking for a summarize or a mutate you just do this all when you call the column name. So I actually will call the column name home points. And I'm going to say, I actually want the average of home points. And I want to, I'm going to use an alias here. So I use as average home score. That's what I'm going to make the new name. I'm going to get the average of home points, make the new name average home score. And I want to do this from the data table season 2001 from the DBCon that we're connecting to. I want to do this where the home team is equal to the Cleveland Cavaliers, because that's what we're interested in. And I'm going to group by the visiting team, which is what we did in the tidyverse uh, version up above. And then I'm going to order by average home score in a descending fashion. So again, I've got that average home points up in my select statement, which is aggregating the average home points when Cleveland Cavaliers are at home grouped by the visiting team, and then sorted highest to lowest uh, by the average home score. And so if we run that, we should 
get something similar to what we saw above. And there's the Denver Nuggets, and there's the Grizzlies and the Bucks. And if you run your get query, uh, uh, show query function, we should see something similar to what I wrote. So select visitor average as home points from season we're nearly exact i don't know why they use the parentheses there in the I'm where assuming clause that's to protect it they also do the uh um not the yeah. not smart quotes but they're the the ticks yes yeah. yeah, to protect oh, yeah. it because you can have like um i mean spaces in there for the call right names. yes and so yeah, that, yeah, yeah that protects it because it like r or sql like r cares about spaces and whatnot so it cares about space but it is not um case sensitive so you could actually put the c in cleveland to lowercase actually oh and i think you should be able to get the same thing so let's test now, that i believe oh Fire. uh wait where where home should i think oh that still it? needs to be no maybe not uh, maybe uh, maybe that one's not case sensitive let's I yeah that might be right yeah that's what it yeah, is so yeah, the yeah column yeah. names are column case names sensitive. are not case sensitive which is a common thing in other languages. Mm -hmm. R is one of the ones where it like screws up a lot of people that are used to other languages where yeah. key sensitivity doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And in R, it does. And in Python too, yes. I think case sensitivity will matter. But uh, in SQL, for the column names, you can type however you want to type it, and it's going to figure right. it out. What so feels right cool. to you that day? Whatever feels right. <laughs> uh, there but we that, go. Those are some basic kind of SQL queries that you might do when you first get sorted with a data set. And our goal is to take some of these fundamental concepts and over the next episode or a few, blow them out into uh, something cool where you connect to a database and get returned some data and turn it into an analysis and maybe turn it into a report or a web app or something fun that you might actually use in the wild. Yes, exactly. And also, if you can think of any information you think might be interesting for us to add to this database, and like maybe uh, so we can work on joins and other cool techniques, windowing, let us know. Yeah. We'd love to hear your feedback as to what you think would make this more interesting and more applicable to the work you do. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, and I think with that, we're going to call it. We've now explored our database a little bit, have a, bit, a little bit better idea of what contents we have in there, pretending we didn't make it ourselves. Um, and then we can go forward from there. Yeah. All right. So as always, my name is Ellis Hughes. You can find me on Twitter at, at Ellis underscore Hughes. And my name is Patrick Ward. You can find me on Twitter at, at OSP Patrick. You can hit us up on Twitter at tidy underscore explained. You can Gmail us tidy dot explained at gmail.com. Like and subscribe on the YouTube channel. Open up a issue in the GitHub repo either way. Uh, if you're just getting started with trying to house your data in a simple database and use it, hit us up and let us know what things might help you get this going off the ground. All right. Thank you all so much. And keep on exploring your world and your databases. <laughs>